And ladies and gentlemen, the flying demonstration is about to begin. Uh, and for an expert commentary on the first act, I'm going to hand over to James Adrian and Bob Howard, who are going to talk you through it. Lovely, thank you very much indeed, Nigel. Yeah, the time has finally come. It's four minutes past now. We've just got one minute to go. Uh, a little while ago, I just saw uh, I saw uh, Julian taking off in his aircraft. Uh, what aircraft is that, Rob, actually? Uh, Julian took off in an extra 230. It's a German aeroplane. Uh, built back in the late 1980s, specifically designed for competition aerobatics. Uh, it's stressed to plus and minus 10G, has a wooden wing, and it has about 220, 230 horsepower. So a very powerful aeroplane. Julian's just about to start his display. He's off in the distance warming up, checking that the smoke works. He's rolling inverted, checking his straps to make sure that they're nice and tight. Throughout this display, Julian will pulling anywhere between plus 8G and minus 6G, so a lot of forces on the body. Rob, it could be a touch of tinnitus, but I think I can hear Julian in the distance. Now, can you hear an aeroplane making a noise? I think it might be your age, but uh, no, hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, look out to the right in front of you. You'll see Julian Murphy in the extra diving in. Four-point roll. He's got to V&E, which is 250 miles an hour, and he's going to pull hard to the vertical now. 8G, there it is, rolling the aeroplane vertically up, flicking it with a negative flick, and he's going to position for a torque roll where the aeroplane reverses while rolling. This figure's known and designed by me called the Tower of Terror. Here he goes, backwards now, rolling the aeroplane, and now he's looking for his references, and he'll be rolling off to start the next manoeuvre, pulling hard now. He'll be pulling something like six to seven Gs now, which is continually on, and he positions to the vertical and does a hesitation roll, which is three of four points. Now he's going to hold the aeroplane there, slow it right down till it stops, and a stall turn. Wow, fantastic. Positioning the aeroplane round, and now flicking it towards the ground, high rate of rotation, and now again heavily on with the G-force, positioning himself, making sure he's in the right place with the wind, pulling up for a figure called the Mulleroid. Here he goes. The aeroplane is rotating now, and he's going to position that rotation into a flat spin. There you go, the aeroplane spinning flat before he recovers. Looks for the crowd line and position himself for the next figure. At this point here, Julian's going to be huffing and puffing quite a lot. He's putting a lot of G-force here, and he's positioning himself to go away from us. So you can see a figure in the distance. He's now looking out for the windsock as he goes away from the airfield with a nice quarter clover there. And he's going to pull up again and show you the top of the aeroplane as he pulls up for a half loop with a flicking manoeuvre. Now Julian's looking in front, looking out for the aeroplanes in the crowd to position himself. Again, about 180, 190 miles an hour, straining now, working hard, pulling back on the stick to pull again about 7 Gs before entering a cravat, a gyroscopic tumble vertically ascending. Julian's now looking out the side of the cockpit, working out where he is, which he's managed to do, that's good. Always good when that happens. You need to know where you are. Pulling off now over to the north of the field, upside down, right way up again. What's that manoeuvre called, Rob? Uh, this is a half reverse Cubanate, but we've just put a few more half rolls on it, just to make it a little bit more interesting. He's now coming towards us now, about 200 miles an hour, and he does a lovely four-point roll and a posing roll to end up inverted. And now a big push, he's being thrown towards the canopy, out of the cockpit. That's a good minus four as he goes round the top, looking down and flicking the aeroplane, auto-rotating twice. And Rob, have you ever flown this aeroplane? I used to own it. <laughs> uh, Julian's flying my display. Which I have to say shows the aeroplane off very well. It is doing well, isn't it? He's doing very well. There's a very good smoke system on that aeroplane. That's pumping about three litres a minute of Ondina, which is environmentally smoke fluid and uh, two pounds a litre. As you can imagine, it's a very expensive display. Oh, yeah. We only have the best here at Waltham. Oh, indeed. Watch the aircraft now as it slows down. Smoke will go off, the throttle will close, and Julian will slide the aeroplane backwards. There he goes in a tail slide. 
Oh, big push there and recovering back to the vertical before flicking the aeroplane back towards the crowd. With that, uh, we can see a, a, another aircraft going to, uh, to Heathrow Airport. Probably the passengers there having a look out the window and thinking, what on earth is going on there? Smoke's back on again now, Rob. Smoke's back on, pumping, a, as I say, three litres a minute. He's positioning towards us now, about 180 miles an hour, rolling and then pitching up into a nice quarter clover. And is that a normal pump rate, three litres a minute? Yeah, it's good to pump at about three litres a minute, James. Fair enough, I'll remember that. <laughs> Julian's now looking for the crowd line again. Pulling hard at the bottom there, positioning the aeroplane for a four-point roll. Each quarter he stops on the roll. And again, skyward he goes, the aeroplane's climbing. It has about a 3,000 feet a minute climb rate, this aeroplane. Wow. Compared to something like a Cherokee that has maybe something in the region of about 800 on a good day. Julian's now going to give you a little loving example of a smoke heart. So look out in front of you as the aeroplane displays a lovely smoke heart. Is that smoke environmentally friendly, gentlemen? It is indeed. This is called Ondina. It's biodegradable and environmentally friendly and food safe. I think and it's supplied by Shell. I used there to have a girlfriend called Ondina. Only on a Tuesday, wasn't it? Julian's now positioning at the end of his display from the smoke heart, just to give you a, a good flyby. Look out in the cockpit, Julian will be looking at you, so look at him, give him a wave as he comes past now, showing you the aeroplane. Positioning now, smoke goes on. Big wave there for Julian, ladies and gentlemen. Hands up, give Julian a wave, he can see you. Thanks, Julian. Wow. Top side of the aeroplane there. That aeroplane is now for sale. Anybody with about £75,000. It's yours. Julian also co-owns the aeroplane with a Stephen Madel, and they are now moving up from advanced to unlimited level competition aerobatics. And very fortunately have been given a bursary from Mazda, that's Mazda Cars, for them to move up and they'll be competing at Sywell from next Thursday at the Unlimited British Nationals. So a big round of applause for Julian as he finishes his display. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Julian Murphy. That opened uh, West London Air Club White Wolf for Members Day uh, 2009. Thanks very much to Rob Howarth. Rob's going to be taking us through some, uh, some displays later on. Very expert on the aerobatic stuff, Rob Howarth. Thank uh, you. So that was number one. Let's go and see what's number two. Let's hand over now to Chris and to Nigel. Well, we have a...